Hello guys, welcome to Kilifi Online TV. My name is Movali Derek and remember every Monday and Tuesday it's all about becoming an executive. This is the executive show and on this edition we are talking about career awareness in the Bachelor of Arts in Languages field. I'm joined by Dr. Elizabeth Minyaya from Pwani University. In the house I'm also joined by two students from Pwani University. On my left hand side is Selina, she has a fourth year student rating graduation and uh, the young man, what's your name? Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Hedy uh, Bondian. I'm a third year student of the University of English and Physics. And most of all, I'm an immediate team member in the program. Thank you. We are joined by Dr. Elizabeth Munyaya from Puan University. Maybe she can introduce herself briefly before we get into a topic of discussion of today where we are going to deal with career opportunities with a bachelor's degree in English and Linguistics, bachelor's degree in Literature, bachelor's degree in Kiswahili. Like generally we are talking about bachelor's degree in languages. Welcome. Good morning ladies and gentlemen. This is Dr. Elizabeth Munyaya. I'm a member in the Department of Languages, Linguistics and Literature. And uh, I'm in this program today by virtue of the fact that I'm the program leader for Bachelor of Arts in English within the Department of Languages, Linguistics and Literature at Kwan University. Welcome to the executive show, Dr. Elizabeth Minyaya. Maybe on our first question, can you give us an overview of the Bachelor of Arts in uh, Languages curriculum? Uh, thank you for that question. Yeah. Uh, an overview of the Bachelor of Arts Languages curriculum at Pwani. Maybe just a, a summary of what we are talking about here. Uh, the field, in the field of English, in the field of Kiswahili, again with a bachelor's in literature, when a student undergoes the curriculum or goes through such kind of degree programs at Pwani, now within the programs of Bachelor of Arts in English, Swahili, and Literature, there is in third year a field attachment component within the curriculum. Now what this entails is that when the students reach year three, semester two, the department organizes for them field attachment or short internship programs. Now, during this time, the department again, uh, in collaboration with other experts in the industries, various industries, we locate and place our students in these areas so that they can undertake the field attachment program. These attachments, huh? does a student uh, do the research of a place where he or she will go for attachment on uh, her own or uh, the school helps or it's both ways? Thank you for that question. In regards to whether the students bless themselves or whether the department organizes, yes. I would say that they do it both ways. We have some students who might have networks yeah. whether they know people in areas they would want to go for attachment in, we allow them to seek for those placements themselves. Okay. However, we have in the department our very able Dr. Violet Aura, who is the attachment coordinator. So during this time, she goes around to seek placement vacancies from the various industries available for these students to be placed. Thank you. Uh, now let's, uh, let's uh, get into the topic of discussion of the day. What are some of the career opportunities that are available with such a degree? A degree in Bachelor of Arts in English and Linguistics, Bachelor of Arts in Literature, Bachelor of Arts in Germany, Bachelor of Arts in French, and Bachelor of Arts in Swahili. Uh, thank you for that question again. Uh, there are a number of opportunities for a student with a Bachelor of Arts in English, for a student with a Bachelor of Arts in Kiswahili, for a student with a Bachelor of Arts in French, as well as German, 
and even we have the Bachelor of Arts in Literature. Now, we have uh, career opportunities for writing and editing, which is one of the careers available. Mm -hmm. And uh, in such, the student will have to do creative writing, as well as fiction and non-fiction, as well as poetry, commercial writing, journalism, writing or reporting, podcast script writing, editing, professional writing, blogging. As I was saying, uh, the many career opportunities with the writing or editing skills, you can do blogging, you can be a speech writer, you can be a column writer, as well as social media writing and management. Now, on, a, on the career opportunity in writing, mm -hmm. there are those students who are talented in writing. Mm -hmm. Maybe who are some of the employers in the market who will be able to pick such a skill? Okay, thank you again. With uh, such a skill of writing and editing, a student can work in various sectors of the economy. Yeah. One, they will work in the newspaper or magazine industries, mm -hmm. or they can work in the broadcast media companies or television, radio, and movie, as well as in trade, professional or consumer publications. You can work in internet sites. You can work with the government agencies, the university and university presses, as well as technical and gaming industry, large corporations, or even as a freelance self-employed journalist. Basically, we have talked about the career opportunity itself, the employer. Mm. Now, someone may ask, what are the strategies that I personally can use to be able to get into these employers, to get into this employment field? Mm. According to you, having been in this field for a while, what are some of the strategies that you recommend to the student doing the writing part as a career opportunity? Thank you. For the strategies that uh, a person with writing skills or editing skills, there are a number of things the student can do as he or she prepares for this field. Very importantly, the student should be able to select elective coursework in a particular area of interest. By this we mean, in the course of you proceeding with your bachelors, yeah. we have some specific courses geared towards this field or area. For example, we have in the department editing and publishing as a course, yes. editing and publishing one and editing and publishing two. Yes. So if you major yourself or choose these, most of them are electives. So you need to choose them for you to pursue a career in this field. Yeah. Secondly, another thing a student can do is to write for campus publication. We have our university press unit yes. and these ones can give you a good idea of what entails a career opportunity in this field. So they can write for pub, uh, the campus publication, newspapers, the magazine, or even for the departmental uh, or program newsletters. Uh, similarly, the student could volunteer to assist or tutor students in a writing center. There are many writing centers in the countrywide. The student can go ahead and volunteer to work there as tutors. Such as for these writing centers online, he can get them? Yes, they are available. They are available so they can search and get an opportunity to join them. Okay. And then in addition, the students need to become familiar with the proposal writing and submission process involved, especially when it comes to freelance writing. And uh, importantly, they could also gain much experience as possible when they attach themselves with volunteer positions, internships or part-time jobs. And most importantly, demonstrate patience, 
and persistence in starting a career in creative writing. Well, basically, there are around seven career platforms uh, for which one can venture in with a bachelor degree in languages degree with that qualification. So maybe can you take us uh, um, uh, in a journey be among the six remaining career opportunities? Now we have done the writing, mm -hmm. which is the second career opportunity that one can venture in. Uh, the other career opportunities available yes. for a student with Bachelor of Arts in English or any other language in the department, we have uh, public relations or advertising. In this career path, opportunities are available for one to be a writer, an editor, a researcher, a, medi a media relations officer, or social media management officer, account management, as well as a fundraising uh, person. In the field of public relations and advertisement, mm. maybe give us who are the employers in this sector now? Now, there are again various employers within the public relations or advertising sector. One of the employers is public relation firms. We also have advertising agencies. We also have in-house public relation departments. When we talk of in-house public relations departments, that for any organization, let's say Kwan University for that matter, there is a department within that organization that deals purely with public relations. Okay. Yeah. Then we also have trade associations, we have colleges and universities, non-profit organizations, government agencies, in-house advertising departments, especially for the media houses, yeah. a majority of them have their own advertising departments, you can work there as well. We also have the sports and entertainment organizations as well as educational institutions, consulting firms, hospitality and tourism industry, private corporation, who can as well work as a freelance public yeah. relation officer. You being a, a lecturer and a qualified lecturer in that field of public relations, what are the strategies that a student can use to venture into that field? Because basically, I think it's also one of the skills me as a student or a student out there can measure in and uh, make it as a source of income in the near future. So what are the strategies you recommend to them? Now, the strategies for a student to venture into this sector, one, I would advise the student to obtain internship or other relevant work experience to break into that field. Okay. Secondly, the student should be prepared to start at the bottom and work for promotions. We don't assume that when immediately you get into a public relations uh, sector, then you'll already become the officer at the top. You have to start at the bottom. And then, in addition, such kind of a person should develop strong research, public speaking and interpersonal skills. Uh, Another advice would be to seek experiences, especially for those that would want to be self-employed or work as freelance. They need to be self-directed, okay? And also a team player. But most importantly, volunteer to write publications for non-profit or student organizations. Here at Kwan University, we have uh, the Kwan University Press. We also have the Kwan University Students Leadership. Those are some of the examples where a student can volunteer to write publications for these associations. And then they can supplement your curriculum with business courses. Okay, so you go online, do a certificate in public relations, go online and do a certificate in diploma for you to gain effectively from the sector as well. There's these questions students usually ask, does the government employ people who have done Bachelor of Arts in uh, languages? Is uh, the government another career field or is it not a career field? Yes, the government is also another 
uh, employment partner yeah. in this career with a major in Bachelor of Arts in any of the languages. Now, the common career paths that a student can venture in within the government sector and both the central government as well as the county government. Now, there a student can work as an administrator, they can work as a researcher, they could work as a policy analyst, a lobbyist, a legislative officer, program management officer, or a cultural resource management officer. The government is a, a very big entity mm -hmm. and it has so many departments, so many specifications. What are the main fields inside the government that a, bachelor, that a student with a Bachelor of Arts in Languages degree can, can seek employment? Now, the student can seek employment from the central government or they can seek employment from the county government which we are calling the state and local government. Okay. They can also work in the public archives and the libraries. And within the county government or central government, they can work in the communication department specifically. What are some of the strategies that the government uses to pick a student who has done a bachelor's degree in languages into their field as an employee? Okay, again, such a student can learn from the central as well as the county government on the application process for you to join. But most importantly, they'll need to seek uh, this application process from the public service board. Okay, so this the father can assist uh, seek assistance from the campus career center. Uh, they can also take additional courses or earn a minor in an area of interest. They can also gain relevant work experience through government internship programs, or they could further their careers by earning a master or professional degree in related fields so as to qualify for the most job opportunities. They can also get involved in campus leadership as well as develop excellent written and oral communication skills. So I've just talked of campus career centers, meaning Pwani has one. Where is it located inside the institution? Okay, we have at Pwani University, uh, the campus career center is based within the admissions department, okay. and the head of that section is Musayeya. His office is usually found, I think, in one of the offices on the ground floor in the old administration block. Thank you. Yes. Now, there is this question that arises mostly among students, those taking literature mostly and linguistics, mm. whereby some say they want to become teachers. Mm. Is there a relation between uh, the Bachelor of Arts in Languages and Bachelor of Education? Is it also a career opportunity for a student pursuing this course? In education, if a student would want to pursue a career in that field, and the student happens to have a Bachelor of Arts in the languages, uh, normally after the four year stint as, uh, with the Bachelor of Arts in English, the student can pursue a postgraduate diploma in education. So this one is housed within the School of Education in the Department of Curriculum, Instruction and Educational Techniques. How long is the postgraduate course? Two years. Okay, then uh, the student will be okay forced to take an extra minor because as uh, usual, the Teacher Service Commission usually employs teachers with two subject areas. So if the student had just uh, uh, majored in Kiswahili, they'll have to be forced to take an extra subject so as to fill that gap. Inside the media houses, there are several departments. There may be a student who is interested in writing, but there are those who are not writers. Mm. They want to publish. So maybe, can you shed more light on this career opportunity of publishing inside the Bachelor of Arts and Languages degree? Yeah. Now, 
for students wishing to pursue career path in publishing, there are a number of sections or departments that students can work in, one of them being editing, or they could work in the advertising department, the sales department, the self-publishing section, circulation section, production section, publicity, marketing, promotion, as well as general administration. With such an opportunity or such a career path, there are a number of employers who would want to employ students with a, such kind of uh, a degree. Yeah. Now, some of these employers could be the normal publishers or magazine or media houses. Sometimes we have special interest magazines or association magazines. We have the Sunday newspaper supplements, educational publishers, religious publishers, professional and scholarly publishers, university presses, independent publishers, as well as any other alternative media publishers. We are talking of any other like the electronic books, audio books. These are all areas available with a person with an interest in publishing. So basically publishing is also one of the skills a student can major in as a Bachelor of Arts. Yes. Publishing industry, one, we have said it's relevant that the person obtains internship in that publishing industry or participate in summer publishing institutes. Uh, I don't know of any in Kenya, but students now with the internet available, you can Google and find out any. And so many courses nowadays are online, so you don't necessarily have to go to the institute for you to gain some of these skills. Then uh, develop proofreading, editing, copy editing skills, and uh, most importantly, gain experience by writing. We've said you can write for student publication, for the PUSA, you can uh, write for the Pwani University Press, and most importantly, you can also learn to conduct informational interviews with or shadow professionals in the publishing industry and they give you insight into this uh, field and sector. You can also volunteer to write or edit publications with non-profit organization. And uh, I would also advise that students be prepared to relocate to cities with a publishing presence. Like in this case, Nairobi has a very good uh, publishing presence. Many of the media houses are based in Nairobi. So you don't assume that a student just uh, needs to stay in Kilifi and do their publishing there. And lastly, you can research the publishing industry to learn more about such a career in publishing. That brings me to, the, to my sixth question of the day. Mm -hmm. There is this field of law. Mm -hmm. And uh, in law, there is so much of writing and stuff. Mm -hmm. Can a student with a bachelor's degree get an opportunity in the law field? And if he is to get an opportunity, what are the opportunities inside the law? To answer that question, uh, with a bachelor's in any of the languages that this department tends to take their students through, you can again venture into the law sector or law firms. Now with the bachelors, you can work in the prosecution, you can work as a law assistant, you can work as a student with the defense council, you can work in the corporate world, as well as in non-profit or public interest field. Here we are talking of the Kenya Human Rights. These are non-governmental organizations that deal with law and policies, as well as you can work in the government, mediation and lobbying as well. Who are the employers in the law field? Because so many people believe that it's only the students who have done law who are uh, viable to be employed in the law. 
field. So who are the employers for a Bachelor of, of Arts in Languages student? Now a student with a Bachelor of Arts in Languages can work also in the law firms. They can work in the uh, county and uh, central government. They can work in corporations. We are talking of Kenya Broadcasting Corporations. They can work in uh, public interest organization. I've talked of uh, Muhuri. Muhuri is uh, a firm that deals with human rights. They can also work in the Kenya human rights uh, organizations. They can work in private practice because we, are, we have so many advocates and their law firms around and you can also venture there. But you can also work in colleges and university as the legal officer in that particular uh, organization. Now, also, maybe just few strategies uh, that will enable a student who is interested uh, with things to do with the law, but uh, situations got him to Bachelor of Arts in Languages. Some of the strategies he can use to get himself back into the field of law. Now, with a major in with a bachelor of arts in english or swahili there are what we would call students association okay societies and clubs so i would encourage that student to participate be it in debate club okay yeah. communication clubs we also have communication do we have communication clubs at one down no. no. So they can work in the uh, they can uh, participate in the debate club where they can fine tune their communication skills yes. so that they finally get to the law firm. They can also develop strong research skills and uh, pay attention to detail. Uh, they are could they could also take courses in and gain experience with mediation and conflict resolution. In fact. Uh, I would uh, just take you back. Recently, we have taken our students for field attachment, the yes. fourth year students in our department, and they would work one at the deputy uh, provincial, is it the deputy provincial assembly office? The DPS. Yes. They have also worked with the county assemblies in the various counties that are around the coast region yes. okay and uh, in a in a in a situation where the student was working at the provincial the deputy provincial we call them the pcs eh? yes. provincial administration now a student placed in such a kind of area or attachment place would go to the field together with the PC or the Deputy uh, Provincial Administrator and they collect views about the many problems bedeviling that particular county or sub-county. Then they document that and finally when they send such kind of resolutions and decisions to the county assemblies, then the county assemblies use such kind of data and feedback to come up with policies that clearly directs the county government from there. So we are saying when they go to the field, they get to learn research skills. They gain experience, especially in mediation and conflict management skills. Okay? Yes. And in such an area, then they can fine tune some of these skills so that they can become either a provincial administrator at the end of it or and they can become a county assembly, maybe admin assistant where they can majorly, uh, for the feedback that they have gained from the field, they can write and document all that to form policies for the future county government. They could also uh, be involved with pre-law organizations. They could also obtain part-time job, jobs with the law firm because recently we also placed some several students with the Mombasa uh, law courts okay mm -hmm. Mombasa law courts Mariakani law courts Malindi law courts okay yeah. so when they get such opportunities of internship 
or attachment, then they are likely to gain some of the skills that can eventually make them work in these law firms. They could also plan to shadow an attorney, an attorney or a lawyer, to learn more about the field and the various specialties that encompass the law field. They could also complete special training requirements for paralegal positions or attend law school and earn a degree to become an attorney and then maintain an excellent GPA or excellent grades and secure strong faculty recommendation to gain opportunities in the law firms. Okay? Yes. Yeah. Now, there is uh, the issue of a non-governmental organization. Just in brief, can you share on uh, the employers, the strategies and the career opportunities in the non-governmental organizations field for a Bachelor of Arts in uh, Languages student? Okay, with the with a degree in uh, with a degree that is geared towards the languages, again you can also work within the non-governmental organizations, and uh, we have various non-governmental organizations that can give students an opportunity with Bachelor of Arts in Languages. They could work as administrators in those areas. They could work as researchers. They could work as development or fundraising officers. They could work as project officers and they could just work in the general volunteer coordination as well as programming. Who are the major employers in the non-governmental uh, organizations field for okay. these students? Non-governmental organizations in Kenya, we have the Plan International, mm. these are well known. We have various World Vision Kenya. We also have Self Care, Save a Life Kenya, and several others. Within uh, again Kenya, we have social service organizations. We have the probation office, okay? Within the county government, these are social service organizations that purely works closely with county governments to ensure correctional facilities are available to any young person who is prone to crimes. In fact, we had recently one of our students based at the correctional department at uh, Ilifi, county government. You can also work with churches and religious affiliated groups. And we have here many of our students who are blessed with the Bible translation and literacy organization in Kilifi, in Kwale, in Malindi, as well as in Tanariva. Now, oh, before we, we move to our last question, maybe give us a three to four strategies for you to use to get into the field of uh, non-governmental organizations. Okay, one can volunteer or just work as an intern with the social service organization. They can learn to work with, with people of diverse backgrounds. They can also develop excellent communication skills, take a course in writing, join a service organization mostly as a volunteer or get involved in community service projects. On our last question, what are the major skills that one university aims to impact to students in uh, these fields of uh, Bachelor of Arts in Languages? Okay, uh, some of the skills that a person at one university may gain as they pursue a Bachelor of Arts in English or Swahili or even German or French Communication skills is one of them, one of the skills. Writing skills is another. Translation skills, which we have said, later on these students were based in Bible, Bible translation and literacy. Uh, they could also gain research skills as they pursue these bachelors. And they also obtain data collection skills. They also get to learn uh, documentation, marketing skills, organization skills, and not uh, 
and not forgetting networking skills as well. Okay. Yes. Now, inside the, the house, I was joined by two students from Pan University. One of them is at the internship process right at Pan University. And I would like her to share how the experience as an intern has been. Then the second student is a third year student at Pan University pursuing a bachelor's degree in English and Linguistics. And coincidentally, both students have done the bachelor's degree in English and Linguistics. He'll give us his question that he has for Dr. Munyaya. Maybe before we move to Dehan Hesborn, let's begin with Selena. What was your experience as an intern inside Pan University in the Department of Languages? Well, it started off as an attachment opportunity that I was handed over to. So I did my attachment in Pan University at the Department of Languages, Literature and Linguistics. So my experience has been so far really good. It has been a good experience getting to at least apply theoretical knowledge from my classroom to the actual field of work. Yeah, so departmental workshops that have allowed me to get involved in how the department is active not only in Kenya but also overseas. I've also participated in a number of forums. Like just recently there was the uh, the MOU, the Memorandum of Understanding between Howard University and Penn University, which allows students from the US to come and learn the language, the Swahili language, for a number of let's say three to five weeks. As much as uh, also, the above two experiences have also been um, part of the admin. I have done some departmental tasks, I've been involved in drafting some few memos, some few aspects of communication here and there. So, about within the department and also across other departments. So, I'm learning. Thank you. It was uh, extremely good and very great experience it was, like intern and it is. that she mm -hmm. at Kwan University. Now we move to our next uh, guest who's also in the house with us student at Kwan University. You are in third year. What is your question that you have for Dr. Munyaya that you may want to know as you continue to further your studies in this field? Thank you so much Dr. Munyaya for shedding insights on this. Now I have one question. I'm a young person who is enthusiastic about writing. But then there's this notion in the publishing industry that always hits me with a, a creativity block each time I think about it. That uh, young people have no experience to write about. That you write a book, you complete it, and then you approach a publisher, and then they will not accept this book because you are a young people. They feel like writers should be old, old people who have gone through a lot in life. How do I deal with that? Thank you for that question, Hesborn. Now, for many upcoming writers in Kenya today, opportunities are there. You only need to search for them. And uh, one, especially with the online writing services, we have several of them. And I can direct you to one freelancer service marketplace where they can help you unlock your writing potential. And uh, you can do that by joining their team and get experience of world opportunities and uh, gain effectively. And you can write to them using the following contacts so that you can get, uh, okay, you can join their team and they will uh, they can pay you for writing whatever it is. For the basic contract, they can give you a compensation of one thousand per project, Kenya shillings one thousand per project. We also have basic contract where they compensate you with one thousand five hundred per project. You can go online again as a skilled writer, level one contract, where they give you two thousand per project. So just go to, which one have we said? Freelance Marketing Project, Freelancer Services Marketplace. I think that one can assist you so that you can publish 
various articles, both fa uh, fiction and yes, both fiction and academic. Now, as we come to the end of our today's uh, interview with uh, Dr. Elizabeth Minyaya, what is your last uh, statement to the various students, uh, starting from Pan University to other institutions that offer similar services in matters to do with career development and career awareness to students? Now, a number of advice to those getting started in careers in the languages as well as literature and how to go about advancing in these areas, one thing I would encourage the students is to develop the major skills that we have outlined. We are talking of writing skills, communication skills, editing skills, problem solving skills, and learning to work both independently and in a team, okay? Secondly, a major, both in the languages and in literature, should also have a good preparation for continued graduate or professional training in those areas. So we have talked of get more education, advance your education, be it if you want to go the English way or the language way, or law, or political, science and government, public administration, communication, the medical field, faith-based professions, we are saying you just need to start. The journey starts with one step. So get more training in that area. Start, uh, secondly, you can be proactive, be determined, be assertive and confident in order for you to secure those freelance writing opportunities. Hezbon here has asked me a question on how to get into the freelancing writing. And uh, I was just sharing with him that many a times we have so much time and yet we do not know how to use that time. So as a student, rather than wasting your time on TikTok, use that time by being proactive, by being determined, by being assertive and confident and get these freelance writing opportunities that are available online. So cultivate your career in whatever field that you are out to gain. So for you to do that, we are saying supplement whatever writing you're doing in class with the freelance writing so that you can gain an extra coin. So we don't have students saying that they have eaten air burgers for lunch seek out those internship positions, seek out those attachment, look out for those volunteer positions in government so as to demonstrate your skills that you have learned and especially in your interest fields of specialization. Just before you graduate, these are some of the things you need to do. And then you can also get involved in organization and gain gainful experience in leadership roles that reflect your interest both in business and government roles. And uh, further, obtain that additional area of expertise such as journalism, broadcasting, technical writing, or politics for the specialized position that you're out to uh, shape your career in. And then, Conduct informational interviews or shadow professional interviews with professionals that are experts in their field. Get to learn from them. If you want to become a lawyer, what do you need to do? If you want to become uh, a politician, go and interview an, a politician and see how he went about it, okay? And last but not least, join relevant professional associations, attend their conferences, just like you had here with Selena Koki saying, they had to attend conferences, they had to participate firsthand through forums, read journals, so that you can gain these insightful skills that are normally never taught in class. These ones are just to advise you to go out of your way. 
take that extra mile to gain from these uh, careers just by you getting that relevant uh, skills and uh, expertise. Now, there is this question of uh, the relationship between uh, mass communication and those taking Bachelor of Arts in Languages and also the relationship between education and uh, those taking Bachelor of Arts in Languages. But basically for the part of education, you have already told us there is the postgraduate that happens for two years. Mm -hmm. Now, the mass communication part, mm -hmm. what is the relationship? There is a relationship between languages and mass communication or communication as a career in general. Now, maybe a student would want to, after their bachelor's degree with the languages, would want to pursue further education in area of communication. I will take this opportunity, this earliest opportunity to inform members or students at Kwan University that currently, as we are talking, there is a newly established curriculum for Master of Communication and Media that is housed within the Department of Languages, Linguistics, and Literature. So, students are welcome. The class has now started. It started last week on 11th, officially and we have about eight students. And the good thing with this uh, area of field is that somebody can join with a background in any field, okay? It's a yes. multidisciplinary. We accept students from uh, multidisciplinary uh, sectors. So with your bachelor's in languages, with your bachelor's in science, with your bachelor's in environment, bachelor's in uh, chemistry or marine, we accept uh, admissions into this program where we'll teach you to learn to communicate with the target oriented audience using the right language, using the right design, and using the correct media. So, students, let me take this opportunity welcome you maybe uh, it will be too late now but uh, the next coming academic year starting in September we are still receiving admissions into this program here is the poster and the event and uh, the program is actually being sponsored by the Federal Ministry of Education and Research Master of Communication and Media in Kwan University learn to communicate target oriented in the right language design and media. Those who are interested in becoming journalists like I, the program has landed. Let's enroll in the coming semester or in the coming academic year. Thank you very much for being part of the executive show. You're one of our best executives and thank you for sharing such great information with students across the country pursuing the courses in Bachelor of Arts in Languages. I'm also very grateful for the Pwani University Press Unit to find it in their favor to come and interview me so that we could share many of the gains and insights in the Department of Languages. Asante. From Kilifi Online TV, I was your host, Movali Derek Dangote. And uh, that was an insight to the entire Bachelors of Arts in Languages. Very soon, we'll dive into the field of linguistics alone, then later the field of literature, Kiswahili. But if you've got any question that has not been responded to, feel free to leave it at the comment section of the video. Till we meet again, have a lovely day. And just as Dr. Nyaya has said, the journey for a thousand miles begins with a single step. <laughs>